Good morning and welcome to morning prayer in the parish of Rayleigh. It's Monday the 3rd of April and we've just entered uh, Holy Week. So uh, just back from uh, Palm Sunday service at Cafe Worship uh, and looking forward to uh, the week ahead. So we begin using the words of uh, the Church of England's morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory forever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only son was lifted up, that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And we'll read the Song of Lamentation, which is taken from the Book of Lamentations. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears. For a comforter is far from me, one to revive my courage. Remember my affliction and my bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. But this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever, though he causes grief, he will have compassion. According to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We move on to God's word and the uh, uh, psalm today is uh, Psalm 41 and that begins. Blessed are those who consider the poor and needy. The Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. Uh, so that's Psalm 41. Uh, please feel free to pause and take a take a look at that um, if you wish. The Old Testament reading uh, is back in the book of Lamentations. Uh, and it's the very beginning of the book, Lament Lamentations chapter 1, reading from verse 1 to the start of verse 12. So again, if you want to spend some time in the New Testament, uh, sorry, in the Old Testament, uh, that's Lamentations uh, chapter 1, verses 1 to the beginning of verse 12. Uh, and that just ends, that, that passage just ends... Um, with the opening words uh, of the Song of Lamentation that I read earlier, it, it ends, Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Uh, and I'm having flashbacks uh, to my time in the choir at St Peter's in Thundersley when I was uh, a young teenager um, and uh, singing Stainer's Crucifixion, uh, which includes um, a, a piece based on that passage. So now we move on to the uh, gospel reading for today. Uh, and as you'd expect, it's taken from the events of Holy Week. And we're reading the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 1 to 23. That's Luke, chapter 22, verses 1 to 23. Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray him to them. 
They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him uh, to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover meal for us that we may eat it. They asked him, where do you want us to make the preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house. The teacher asks you, where is the guest room? Where, my, where may I eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of it, which one of them it could be who would do this. So a, a very familiar story um, that we remember every time we uh, uh, share communion um, and Jesus describing uh, what the bread and wine represent in terms of his body and blood um, but but also Jesus talking about it or indicating to the disciples that it's going to be his last one on earth until um, until we are sharing with him in heaven um, but looking at the passage the, the the thing that was striking me today um, is it can feel like um, other people are controlling events. Um, you know, Judas is making the decision to betray Jesus. Um, the priests and the and the um, teachers uh, are wanting to um, uh, wanting to have Jesus killed, but actually uh, God is in control of this situation. Um, uh, he knows um, what the plan is. Jesus knows what the plan is. Um, even to the extent that um, Peter and, uh, and John are sent um, into the city to find what would have been an unusual sight of a man carrying water. Um, that unfortunately was, uh, was considered uh, a, woman's, uh, a woman's work. So there was going to be this, this unusual sight um, that, uh, that God had arranged as the, as the signal for, for um, their host for, for the evening. Um, and you know Jesus talks about um, eating this meal with uh, disciples before he suffers. So Jesus knows what's coming and, and, and God's in control. Uh, and we have to rem remember that in our life, that in our lives, that, that, uh, that God is in control. Um, it's a very difficult thing to do to, uh, to, to give things up in that way. Um, but he really is there. And that's what, uh, uh, you know, that's what God wants us to be, be able to do. I just realised I'm sitting very low in the frame. Just let me adjust my chair a minute. Oh, there you go. You can see my chin now, or both of them. OK, so we move on to uh, a time of prayer. Uh, and in this Passion Tide season, the season between um, uh, between Palm Sunday um, and, uh, and, Holy, uh, and, and the end of Holy Week, um, we pray in particular um, for the persecuted church, oppressed peoples of the world, all who are lonely, all who are near death and all who are facing loss. But let us begin by praying for today and this week 
we ask that you'll be with us uh, in everything we're doing with family, friends, with colleagues, uh, on our own, in groups. Um, we pray that we will remember that you are in while we're going about our, our daily efforts. Uh, you will, uh, that we will remember that you, Father, are, are in control uh, and that we do all things in your power and, and to your glory. We pray for our world and its, its many, many needs. We pray for uh, the need for, for justice, for fairness, for peace, um, for healing, for graciousness, for consideration, for mercy. Uh, we pray for, uh, um, again, as, as we have done for more than a year now, we pray for the people of Ukraine um, in their suffering. We pray for uh, everyone suffering from, uh, from war, from famine, from hunger, from disease. And we, we, we thank you for um, the large number of people and organisations and governments and NGOs and so on that uh, that are supporting our world through its many challenges and, and trying to meet its many needs. Give us, Father, a general a generous heart to support those in need and support those who are helping. Um, whether it's uh, a gift of time, a gift of money, or or just simply a gift of prayer. Pray that we can support or help us to find the opportunity to support its world and its many varied needs. And we pray for our church and, and life. And, and today, um, hearing that uh, that Glenn's ill um, and uh, and may not be um, uh, may not be able to uh, lead us in our worship over over Easter weekend, we pray for healing for. For him, and that uh, that Glenn and Anita will be will be kept well uh, and recover. I don't know whether Anita's actually ill, but uh, I pray that she's kept safe as well. Uh, so we um, we we pray your protection over Glenn, and we we thank you for the the large number of people that are uh, are going to help us uh, should Glenn not be able to support us um, over Easter weekend. We thank you in particular for. Um, uh, Jackie and for Tracy uh, and, uh, and and everyone else that's going to step in and step up um, over this situation and we pray for the people that are going to come and come into our church through the coming week uh, we've we have the morning Thursday service we have cafe worship uh, on Friday morning we have the Good Friday service for all the churches in Rayleigh we thank you for that opportunity we have uh, to worship together at, um, in so many different ways and in so many different settings. So we, we, we pray for, uh, we pray thanks for, for the great gift that we have uh, to be able to meet like that. Which moves us neatly on to praying for our brothers and sisters who are uh, living and worshipping in, in persecuted churches throughout the world. We think of all the countries where um, it's it's illegal to be Christian, or where uh, Christianity is is very much the um, oppressed minority um, faith, and where people have to meet in secret, worship in secret, communicate privately, where perhaps people aren't able to live out their life as fully as as we are, and certainly I'm grateful for for this kind of opportunity to share. Um, but I pray that, um, uh, but that this message of, of love and support for persecuted churches throughout the world uh, will reach them, uh, and know that, that we are thinking of our brothers and sisters and, and praying God's love and protection over over you all. And we move on to people who are oppressed in in other ways, whether it's by um, for government reasons, for, for reasons of faith, for reasons of race. Um, there's so many different isms that, uh, that, pe that people can use um, to identify difference and, and cause oppression. 
So we pray that, uh, that, that God will again show love and protection to people who are oppressed in any form. And we pray that the oppressors will see truth and wisdom and light um, and understand that, uh, that the love we should show to people of any background, any persuasion, any, any type uh, in, in this world should be the same love that God shows to us. We pray for the lonely. We pray that they're able to face their so many different situations in a way that's appropriate to them. And we pray if people need comfort, that they will receive comfort. If lonely people need company, that they will find someone to be with or people will find them who can be with them. If people are lonely and need peace, we pray again that your peace will rest on them. And we pray to the, for those who are near to death and those that are supporting. Again, help these people to find comfort in their last moments. We pray that they're able to find people to meet their physical health needs and their spiritual and mental well-being as well. We pray that people will come to see you as, as their maker and redeemer. Um, and and that their last moments will be filled with, with your love and protection. And finally, we pray for those who are alongside uh, people who are dying, those who are facing loss, or those who have been bereaved. Again, we ask that they will find your comfort, your peace, your love, through some means, whether it's through a person, whether it's through a message, um, whether it's through something they read or hear. We just pray for your comfort and your peace on all of those who mourn. We move on to the collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race, sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And to conclude, may Christ who bore our sins on the cross set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thank you very much for spending time with us this morning. Please take some time to uh, read those Bible readings in your own time. Uh, and maybe have a look online to see which other readings uh, we're looking at through the course of Holy Week as we head towards Maundy Thursday when we remember the Last Supper and Good Friday and we think about the crucifixion uh, and of course then finally the joyous events of, of Easter Sunday. Um, so thank you again, have a fantastic week uh, and uh, may God go with you all. Have a great week, bye now.